All right, I got a different camera position today and I'll be walking around. I'm George from Pebblecheck Studios and I will be making a glass marble. Usually I'm working on a propane oxygen torch with glass rods. I will be doing combinations thereof today, mostly uh, using my crucible furnace, which is this thing over here. Let me let's catch a view in there. This is on a foot pedal, and I have the dirty looking stuff on top is actually uh, some extra fiber frax insulation for energy uh, oops, let's get this out of here. energy savings. There's some about 2100 degree glass, about 40 pounds of it. There's a switch that turns it off when the lid is open. And there's a counterweighted switch there that goes up to a pulley system. Can we see it? Let me lift this up. So when I step on it, it opens the lid. And then next to that is my little annealing oven. Next week we'll probably have the big one going, um, which is actually right here. Uh, that's got some areas to preheat stuff so that I can pick up objects that have preheated to a thousand degrees and then include them in my marbles which we won't be doing today because I'm not ready. It takes some prep. So this kind of gets a lot of the area here and I might switch things as we go. We'll see how it goes. Last night I was doing a test and I had my wife Barb moving the camera around and that was super cool of her and nice. Uh, she's got other things to do today. She might follow me around for like a minute or two, but I wouldn't count on that. So let's start it here and we'll fire up the tanks and see what happens. Oh look, there's Barbie. <laughs> she's working on another project, an important secret project. I mean a regular project. <laughs> Yes, that's right. So I'm just turning on my oxygen tank. I've got those chained up outside of my fume hood here to the concrete wall. My gauge looks good. Let's fire this up. always do everything the same year to year. This equipment changes, my intentions on what I'm going to do changes. So right now, this is my little rod preheat. This is my, oh my glass blowing rods. It's not hollow, so you can't actually make vessels on it. But most of the work I do is solid. So um, this big stainless steel rod gets me into there for glass gathers. And we'll see what happens in just a minute. Well, only had like two stints of working on the glass. It's starting to get clean. The crucible furnace, it's a recycled batch of glass. Um, so it's not meant for doing uh, finished products generally. Um, like marbles, which most of my marbles are 90% are, uh, clear. And then that clear is very high quality so that you can really see the design that's going on inside. This is uh, one of the marbles I made this morning, and you can see the blue as the clear, and it took that orange, which side is the camera, this side. that was orange and dark orange, and it looks a little bit tan because of that blue, and it's still flood marble, not what I intended. So. We'll see, we'll make some marbles that will lend themselves to blue with some of this glass today. Since this is running, i got to use it. So this, you can see the tip of this is getting very hot, and so that's ready to pick up glass. If I just stuck it in there at room temperature, it would not pick up anything. Alright, so that's preheated. 
This is to shield my hand from the heat, since this is so short and this is so hot. I can just run in there. Shield my hand, my gather. Here's my marble plate. So my gather is on there. I don't, I'm not sure what this is going to look like here. I'm not used to doing this angle. So there's my rod. Ends there and the glass comes out to there. So let's do a stringer first to get warmed up. So I'm going to take that clear area and I'm going to uh, decorate it. And there's a bunch of different ways you could decorate something like that. You could use um, pre-pulled uh, stringers, you could use rods, you could use frit, you could use enamel powder, and so let's do a combination of enamel powder, which I'll pick up first, and we'll decorate it with some glass rods, which is my normal construction, to put a different color on there. Alright, so I heated that back up, and I'm going to go pick up some pink enamel. That was some pink enamel that had been sitting out for a long time. It might have had some sawdust on top of it. So let's see if that changes anything. It's pretty good. So you can see I got a light pink powder on that gather. Let's put a little red stripe on there. Flashing my rod to get the temperature. Continuing to heat my gather on the black flame. Let's get the camera over there. There we go. So really, this part that's attached to the metal handle, the punty, isn't going to become anything. That's just going to be waste. So we're going to try to minimize that. And just put our color where we want it. And enamel powder is sometimes hard to stick color to, so that peeled right off. I'm just going to adjust it. There, we evened it up. Let's put one on the other side. Ooh, no, let's do a different color. Let's do some yellow. This yellow is here. A little white, and then on white I'll put a little frit. You can go very simple or very fancy with little canes that you're going to pull and the diameter to which you pull them will give you other options on what you want to make out of those little pieces afterwards. All right, so we put some stripes of color on there. There's the white, there's the red. Let's pick up some sparkly adventuring frit on that white stripe. There's the frit. Let's melt it in. We'll make this gather smooth so that I can go into the furnace and get another gather of ideally clear, but it's going to be semi-garbage-y, recycled, blue, weird stuff. But, I mean, melted glass is melted glass. I'm having a blast, so... I like the process. Alright, let's switch the camera down to the crucible. ways you can get gathers out of the furnace. Some people will tell you that there's only one way. I would like to tell you that there's about nine. And all of them are right because they're with the kind that you like. 
and I like different ones for different construction techniques. Now this one for, I wanted just a little coating on top of that. And so I went straight in, I pulled out of the gather, and then I just gave a little twist to back it off and get out of there. Then immediately, instead of leaving glass on the end, I move it up like this so any of that clear comes down to this middle portion. And so I'm going to maximize the amount of glass that I've gotten out of there. Let's get back over here. Let's see how far. There we go. Now, normally I would go quicker and not let that get cold. Here's another stainless steel handle, a smaller one. And now I have a, a highly paid assistant that's with me today who's going to help me pull this cane. He's just a little guy, he only weighs like 40 pounds, and his name is Landscaping Brick. We just call him Brick. Let's get that handle on there. Let me get this all nice and wiggly, and I'm going to move the camera before it gets too wiggly, so you can see, see us in action. There's Brick in the corner. You can see his little face right there. Alright, so right now my gather has just gotten a little bit cold, so I need to heat it. And getting gathers of any size to pull out into a consistent diameter stringer is a lot of getting it right, getting it a little bit hotter than you need it to be, and then manipulating it as it travels through the temperature that you want. And so here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say here, Rick, you hold this. Thanks, buddy. And then I'm going to start turning this and adding some twist. And as I'm twisting it, I'm going to start moving away. And you can see some of it's getting thinner. That thinner area is going to start to freeze and it's going to pull on that thicker area. And I'm twisting it around. Go baby, go baby. It's gotten too cold. Now, if you watch Brick, it starts to move. That means the glass is too frozen to twist anymore. You can feel it. All right, so we've got some rod nippers right here. I'm going to set that down on my bench and set that off. Like that. Chilling water. And then this one, we're going to find a safe place where it's not going to get stepped on. This piece of concrete. And then we'll just cut off. We'll look at that later. And then there's a little bit of glass left on the end. So let's go ahead. Just put that back in the plane. Oh, it's popping all over the place. We're going to use that as our base gather for the next one. Did we get that in? <laughs> oh, yeah. Fall colors laid out. That would be nice. I was thinking Halloween stuff. Harvest stuff. All right, so that is getting... Rather than me just holding it or trying to twirl it around or something like that, I can get things ready or put things back where they were while this heats back up again. And I'm just going to shape it for the initial gather. Just set the garbage on there. All right. So I've got my rod, and it's covered with a little bit of glass. There's some on the end. So my next gather... I'm going to try to start right just about a quarter inch in from that end when I pick it up. Let's try it! And we'll do another stringer, see if it comes out better, and then we'll switch to something bigger. My eye is a little bit off. And 
I went too deep in the gather. You can see I gathered over that whole deal. So I'm gonna I'm gonna move it down by marbling it toward the end. And that's probably more along the lines of the gatherer we get for doing a, a larger diameter stringer. So let's cover that all up. Great. Let's see what we got here. Oh, that looks pretty good. Alright, let's put a base color on there. And I think in the pre-show I got a close-up. I've got all my different enamel powders laid out here for different colors. So let's grab some green as a base. And we'll just melt that in see what kind of coverage we got. It's pretty nice actually. Now let's, I'm going to just do a little squish. Now I've made it slightly squared. I'm going to pick up some different panels of color lightly. Let's go with Just a, just a little light, quick grab. On the other side, we'll get a little contrasting mustard. Didn't quite get there. It's a frick that put in there for picking up. There we go. So now we've got a little bit panel of yellow, panel of brown. And then on one of those greens, let's get some venturing. Now let's melt it all in again. And I'm going to get just a nice thin gather over top of this. Normally with my crucible furnace set at 2065, these would be very small gathers. Um, you know, like less than a quarter inch of coverage over my marble. Quick complete coverage, uh, but if I wanted to build any kind of uh, sizable core, I might have to get three rapid gathers just because they'd be small, because they'd be so hot. But since this is recycled glass, it is stiffer, and so this the high temperature is not quite doing the trick I did add a little bit of some flexing agents that I'd like to try last night and then uh, um, before I was messing around and then before I idled the kiln. So it had a lot of time to steep through the glass and it helped a bit. So I might add a little bit more tonight. You want to just add a little bit um, as you go, not go crazy and poison your glass. Anyway, I'm talking too much and I'm not getting glass on this thing. Let's do that. Get over here maybe. Get a view of that. Yes. Let's get in there. Let's on that thing. I go straight in. Okay. Twist out. I yank out fast because I don't want to drag strings. And then I held it back to let that glass come back down. And wow, boy, that almost looks like I want to make a marble or paperweight out of it. But will I? I don't know. No. Let's stretch this one out. I want to do a larger diameter. rod for making some earrings. So 
a fall color earring. So ideally, I would like to pull this down to about a quarter inch. The problem with some of the stiffer glass is that it either won't pull or it'll pull down to a, just a tiny thread. Annoying, but there you go. I can see I picked up also some impurities left over from my flexing agent. This one looks cool. But it also looks like garbage. Like um, a piece of kiln break or something, but it's not. Alright, once in a while I see me wiggling it, I'm engaging the viscosity of the glass. Alright, now I'm going to fold this up. Thread to hold it. Green brick. My old assistant's name is Fred. He was also a brick. Oh, and that impurity in the glass became a lump. It's right there. Oh, see? Brick is moving. I'm done twisting that. And what it looks like, there's that piece of impurity stuck in there. That's still very cool. And those will make cut into bits and then remelted will make some great earrings. Let's do this. This end is kind of Kind of big. I wouldn't be surprised if that uh, you heard a big pop later, like in a minute or two, because that blew apart. And let's get that number and we'll look at the first cane we made, because that's cooled down. Yeah, it's going to be hard to show some of this stuff without my magnifying glass. This does not look like much. <laughs> All right, let's move on to a marble. We'll get a big one going. And that looks good. Since our glass is blue, I think we're going to do a blue enamel, probably something like that. But we'll add a little bit of lighter color in there too to get it to pop. So here is dark blue and light blue mixed together, kind of a mess. That's more light blue. So I have a fume hood on, but the straw is not, it's kind of feeble. It's mostly for gas. So I don't wear my mask, is right here, so, but I'm just going to put my shirt over my face while I'm getting this powder on the plate. Once these are on their plate, they're not going to be dusting up much. But just when we do that, that we're making the dust pop up. So I'm going to just give that a minute to clear. I'm going to get my first gather. Oh, and let's get off a lighter blue and white for our colors. Alright, we 
get our first gather. This will be a tiny one. And I'm going to just shape it. Initially, right away, chase some of the glass down. Make myself a nice little LED light bulb shape. I had a little whip tail going around there so the shape is not smooth. So I'm going to smooth it out. Not really imperative if this was going to be actually the center of a smaller marble or something like that. Important. I just do it as a matter of course. Smooth gathers pick up glass smoothly. Uneven rough gathers pick up glass well like crap. So let's avoid it if we can. Unless we're doing something really, really artistic, which I'm not doing that right now. <laughs> All right. So, gather number one, let's get gather number two on there. Oh, and that large end of the cane we just did popped. Probably couldn't hear it. Yep. It broke. I'm actually going to get a little bit more glass than that on there. But I'm going to shape it up a little bit. And so I want my core to be a little bit bigger. So at this point, what I'm going to be doing is getting a partial gather. If I'm doing like pickups where I'm going to measure what my core size is semi-exactly, which is important for some more, um, you know, if you have a really good idea of what your finished product's going to look like. Um, you get a gather a bit bigger than you want, and then you just take some off. So this one, I'm just going to add a little bit more, so I'm going to gather like from here to the end. I just want to increase this by maybe a third. Let's see what happens. It's easy to add a lot quickly um, with stiffer glass, so we'll be, we'll be gentle. Alright, so I just put a little hat on it, as you can see, it's already, it's joining its buddy there. Give it a little squish. And we'll give it a little heat. And then let's we'll decorate a core. Get some heat in there again. Let's give it a little shape. So in my other demonstrations, you hear me talking about my steel marver and my graphite marver. So here's my graphite one. Here's my steel one. And then I have a steel paddle around here somewhere. I haven't seen it a while. Oh, I might have needed to weld a new thing on it. So it's probably sitting over there. All right. We are even, and it's a cylinder now. And uh, let's see. I need like a card. See? Hmm. Let's get a card again. I'll pick up that light blue. Then we'll decorate over top of that. Enamel powders have a different feel depending on how they're screened. They're like fine sand. They work best for coating on your glass blowing. If they're screened finer, 
they become like dust. Um, with all that extra surface area, they're harder to encase in without completely melting them into your design. And this medium blue that I just happen to have a lot of this medium blue. It's grown very fine. I find that kind of inconvenient to use most of the time, and it also, if I'm painting with one of those little mandala making sticks, um, it doesn't flow as nicely in those, and it doesn't drop and splash as nicely onto your painting. So, all in all, not as good. Alright, so I picked up some blue and I melted it in. You can see some dark blue right there on the top towards this way. It's, well, it was not a pristine situation. Alright, so let's put some stripes on there. How's that? Yeah. I'm going to put on some white. And some light blue. So, this is like very similar to my swipe encasing technique for clear glass rods for doing just exclusively lamp working. And so here I'm just going to touch, drag, and then melt to release, and then put that slug of white on there to be a nice stripe. The thing is that it's even in thickness and fairly even in width. Not 100%, but we're not making spaceships here. We're making marbles. And I want a little variation. Not squirted out by a machine. Made by hand. Let's get some of this light blue on there. dark blue stringer. When I say stringer, I just mean it. it's a little thread. Alright, my line of dots was a little shaky there. I've been sitting down working all winter. I mean all summer. And when you're working in the, the furnace, generally standing up most of the time. A lot of designs I will be in the furnace for a portion of the marble, and then I'll be here at the torch for a half hour on something, and then go back and finish in the furnace. So it's a lot 50-50, I guess. Mm. When you're doing precision work, it's easier to sit down. Let's just say that. All right, so there is my enamel base. Two white and light blue I put on sort of in racing stripe fashion, and then I put in some dots there to make it like maybe it was a, used to be a frog or something before we turned it into a marble. Now let's melt it so it's smooth, and we're going to go back into the furnace and get some clear on there. Get our marble underway. Well, not underway, but another step towards completion. Let's 
just wiggle it around and see if we can make it better. I'm going to give it a little twist right now. attachment points on there. Let's start giving a little twist. There, it's starting to come. Move that off. Filter there. All right. Now I'm going to get rid of this handle that I just put on. There's a hole on the end where the enamel powder wasn't covering. Let's close it up. So I'm defining a little line here and squeezing it down, doing a little twist as I go. Now it's really thin so it's going to pop off as soon as I chill it. Like that. There's the nub that came off. Let's look at our end, see if we got it. I don't think we did. But most of the way there. But yeah. So you can still let's see if we can get you guys to see this. There's still a hole in the middle. Let's well we can leave it open. Normally I pitch that down to a point. So let's do that. Oh, right. Crackle finish. <laughs> so when my glass is new, the nubs are actually quite nice and clear. I save those. Um, I can melt those flat and do other stuff with them or remelt them. A lot of them end up in this crucible. The blue ones where I've already recycled it once, um, they can also end up in like other crafts and stuff too. But it's probably about time to send those to the bucket. All right, so I'm doing the same thing as I did before. So I'm pop that off. Let's pop it into the water this time. I still didn't close it. Let's leave it as a mysterious hole into the middle of the marble. I want to finish this marble and I want to do one more thing after this. So I'm going to start to sphere up the side that's not attached right now. That will be some light pressure in the mold. I'm going to get a slightly bigger mold than the ones I normally use. And this glass, like I said before, is stiff, so it's being a little more stubborn. And it's a, a bigger amount, too, so it is going to be a little bit slower to get moving.
speared up that end a bit. I'm going to put a new handle on here and then melt this part off. So I'm already going to be pumping heat into here as fast as I can. So i got to get that off of there. It's going to need a lot of heating. This glass has to be the right temperature, and this stainless steel rod has to be the right temperature. If it wants to bore in a little bit and get a really good grab into that glass. All right, now I can heat the sort of half a marble that's attached to the larger punty rod, and then a lot of heat into that punty rod, because I want to pull out the punty rod from the marble I do want to take some of the marble with it, but I'd like it to pull out without taking too much glass, and then I will decide what kind of glass I want to take off after that. So there it goes. Pulled out. And then the bucket. bucket full of water to chill that glass and shatter it off. So now, this end is messy as well. I'm going to have to figure out how to show you guys these close-ups. That little nub's got some little froggy dots and stuff on there, so that'll be fun. Go in a jar to later get melted flat and put in a earring or uh, something. Maybe just thrown out into the yard for kids to find. I guess there aren't any kids around here anymore. Alright. Now we got a lot of heat in there. We can start to shape this back into a marble. It's going to take a couple tries to get it in there. So on the bigger marbles, although you probably heard me mention this before, a lot of glass working is heat it, reheat it, three or four seconds to do your thing, and then it's back to reheating. Like that, when you get to these bigger marbles, that is the way of it. Alright, one more sphere form. done some, I would say, sledgehammer work here to get this semi-spherical. It's time to start adding a little finesse to the works. Going in a marble mold that's a little bit bigger than the mold, marble, and one that's smaller, using just the rim, spinning it and changing the axis of rotation, axle, axis of rotation. We've improved the sphericalness quite a bit. I'm going to do it one more time on this side and then probably hit it with the cherry wood molds. So the, sp the spin from side to side on this marble is not good. I'm 
not even. That's probably a combination of this glass being stiff and this being one of the bigger marbles that I've made so far uh, since I had my furnace on the past couple months. I'm mostly making smaller marbles like that. And the jump is may not seem like a lot, but there's a little touch that you get and it takes a few to get back in the swing. Still though, it'll look cool anyway. Our surface look. It's pretty nice actually. Alright, let's get a glass handle on there. This will be our last handle. And we'll do a medium size cold joint. Melt off our Steel joint, steel punty. See if we can pull out some glass with it. Yes. Check it for weirdness. It's a little bit of a something in there. Without. And. I'm going to hit it with the graphite molds one time, and then the cherry wood, and then we'll be able to put this on the annealer. Alright. Looks like we got enough heat in there. Let's run it through the molds. A little bit of the big, slightly smaller. It's a little bit oval yet. I'll do it one more time. Even though it's smooth, I can see the shape is just a little bit elongated. Which is probably okay for a sort of a second tier marble here. But since I'm here, I might as well make it as good as possible. So we'll all be proud. I fixed it a little bit. Now I'm just using the flame to polish the surface so that my reflections from my lights above are not wiggling as I turn it. And I'm just going to let the surface cool a little bit so that when it touches those 
cherry wood molds are not going to grab onto them by vaporizing the surface and sticking to it. And now I'm just heating that last little nub into the surface of the marble. Now grab a appropriately sized marble pliers. Heat those up. They are orange. stick to the marble, but they're hot enough so that they don't shock it with the temperature difference. And I just jiggle it to get in there. And then I have the marble. And I'm going to put it in the annealing oven. big blob of gross stuff. But anyway, that was fun. So the glass being stiff, as I mentioned before, it uh, doesn't really want to pull down uh, unless you really heat it, and then it wants to pull into a little thread. These actually, like three or four millimeter ones, pull out pretty nice, but the, the bluish tint to the recycled glass mutes a lot of the colors or makes them weird. Anyway, got a few minutes left. I'm going to see if normally you can't blow this glass because it is too stiff, but it's fun to try. Um, if I have like really nice clean already, it blows just beautiful. Um, but you have to work really quickly or it shatters. So, um, this is my, uh, my spotting here for glass blowing. My little tiny blowpipe. And let's heat it up. So, when I heat it up, I'll get a gather, I'll cover the, um, the blowpipe is flared, and so you can actually see where the glass is usually attached. And then I'll roll it out so it looks like a light bulb pretty quickly, and then put a bubble in it. Because when you put a bubble in it, uh, when it's hot, it goes in very easy. When you, if you wait till it's too cold, and you're trying to shape it perfectly, it takes forever, it's a pain in the ass. You will never get enthused about glass blowing if you do it that way. So, get in there, get gathered, put a bubble in there right away before you do anything else. Let's try it. So, my last, my clean glass went back this January, I think, so, it's been a while. I'm going to 
one right now. Throw the marble in there. And my little bubble. Mm, so cute. You think bubble? That back up. Let's make a bubble of bubbles. Let's see. Where's my there it is. My high tech bubble matrix. A pin block for floral arranging. I'm gonna heat the glass up. Make some little holes. Let's cover them up. See what happens. Alright, I'm just letting it even out. Air bubble. Pretty thin there. I overdid it. Oops. I ruined it. Oh well, that was fun. I'm just gonna put my thumb over this hole so that when I quench it, it pops open and doesn't jam up the hole for next time. Get some out. Let's do it again. Seeing any of this? Oh, thanks. Yep, new angle. All right, we're gonna blow another little vase, maybe. I don't know how if we'll get there or not, but just for heating the blowpipe. Different look because it's it's hollow. It's got this flared end, so. I get a little bit of glass on there, and I'll make a bubble right, right away in this little mirror. I can see what I'm doing at the end. <clears throat> Ready to go. Bubble in the end. I'm going to marble it quick. Yeah. There, a little light bulb. Let's try the bubble matrix trick again. Oh, if I wanted to put uh, some color on it, which is fun. Then take over this bubble I can take like a transparent color and swipe coat the bubble this is probably the crazy way to do it
So I put like eight little stripes around that bubble of some transparent green. We'll keep the outside so it melts in without disturbing the bubble on the inside. Now let's get, let's get our tiny bubbles in there. Oh, looks like a little strawberry. Now let's pick up another layer. Nice little bubble. See, so you can't tell where I'm at here. There we go. Now let's grab the bottom with a little handle. And let's keep the neck. the neck out. I want the neck to close. Here we go. Mm, yes. I'm heating the bottom so that this other handle doesn't let go. And then I'm going to chill this right here. Tap it off. If I can. Oh, I still lost my handle. So I'm going to get that back on. Before it all goes to hell. Sneak it back up. My neck got messed up because I'm rusty. But let's put a new lip on there. So I'm going to do just a little, like a mini lip wrap to attach. I'll work my way around. Put this little fish mouth on there. Kind of cool. I'm going to give it one more wrap. It's a little bit thin. And I'm going to attach the screen so I don't disrupt the lip. I don't have any of my necking tools handy. Let me see if I can find something. I found a triangle thing. It's very small in there. 
acceptably small. Let's get in there. Tweezers and stretch it out. All right, we stretched it out. Now let's put a little pitcher on it. the butt. Oh, it cracked. We'll finish it anyway. So, flatten the bottom. Dimple the bottom. What do I have to dimple this? I don't even know. I guess we can use this. I got some special graphite pokey things for doing dimples on the bottom of things. For doing bases in this method. Alright. Now we can put a real bottom on there. A tiny base. Now, chill that mark. Polish that off. And let me grab my finger thingies. Tongs with fire gloves, fingers. Grab it. Put it in the kneeler. Alright. That wasn't a good base, but it was a base. And that is going to be it for today. I'll try to have something. Uh, a little more organized for next week, maybe, I don't know. Yeah, this was fun, though, right? Cool. I'll read back through the comments and get back to you later today. If there was anything. Otherwise, thanks for coming. We'll see you next time.